What's up, Rattlers? So I'm down here in Florida, in West Palm Beach, at McCarthy's Wildlife Sanctuary. And let me tell you something, Mark and his wife Annette have one of the coolest venomous rooms I have ever seen. And we are about to get a private tour of the venomous room here at McCarthy's Wildlife Sanctuary. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. At Zilla, we are dedicated to the innovation of caging, lighting, and equipment solutions that provide proper husbandry for your pet's long and happy life. To see our entire catalog, visit ZillaRules.com. So this is Mark McCarthy and his wife, Annette. This is the venomous room here at McCarthy's Wildlife Sanctuary. I've always liked venomous stuff and, you know, started working when I was 16 with venomous snakes and never really left and always collected them and, you know, just something that I'm very interested in. I've had a few bites and I had a couple of bites. So, you know, it's just something I, we like doing. As you do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. It's nothing. It's nothing. Much, nothing. When you're handling those snakes for 40 something years, you know, every now and then something's It's gonna, gonna happen. All right, so, look, oh. Here's the thing. Wow. Look at this. are venomous. I have 26 different types of rattlesnakes in here. I'm a big rat into the rattlesnakes quite a bit. Here we have uh, Gila's. We have three different Gila monsters in here. Uh, my oldest one's name is Tequila, and then we have Sheila, and then we have Margarita. And they're pretty good. And this is my oldest one. This is Tequila here. I had this guy a long, long time. But the Gila monsters are pretty rare. I found um, last summer when I was out in Arizona, I found three dead ones on the roads, which was kind of sad. Yeah, that is sad. I've only seen one living one in all the times I've been down to Arizona. Yeah, it's weird. You know, some people go out there the first time they find everything. And then some of us go out there for 40 years and we're still searching for stuff yeah, we've never yeah. seen before. And, and we hate those people. Yeah, we do. <laughs> I know a few of them, actually. <laughs> So anyways, this is tequila. Beautiful. Then we have uh, some lutosis yeah, down some here. Yeah, some lutosis. And, and these are the Great Basin Rattlesnakes. Yes. Uh, here's another Cape Cobra in here. I got a few Russell's Vipers also. I really like yeah. Russell's Vipers. Um, I really have a soft spot for Deboya. Yeah, they're just beautiful. Okay, we cannot just walk right past yes. the Timorensis here. These are Timorensis. In Solaris. Uh, these I got from Mike Van Nostern. He donated them to me. And we have both color phases here, the blue phase and the yellow phase. I really like them. They're, they like to strike a lot, you know. These are the first ones that I've ever met that like to strike. Yeah, you guys like to, I mean, there's no problem feeding these guys. Just slide the door open, put a boom, put a mouse on a tongue, and boom, they're off. Uh, I got a couple young Bushmaster. Yeah, they are real pretty. They are amazingly beautiful. Yeah, especially this particular one here. I got two from there. So this guy's getting pretty good size. He's a little too when we first got him. Seems pretty chill. Yeah, they're pretty chill these guys. This is the other bush monster. This one's a little darker than that one. You can see the difference in coloration. Yeah, that other one was had a lot more red to it, and this is this is more of a wild type coloration. Yeah. They're yeah. not that red like the other one are. Really nice. I like them a lot. I remember Louis Porter's had one that was just giant. Yeah. We used to freehand with him and Joe. Right. They were Gucci. Wow, that is beautiful. How can you not love a Bushmaster? I don't know. It's almost awesome. Now I see you have a really small Bushmaster over here. Yeah. Hopefully we'll take a look at him later, but. That's We're still on this wall over here. Yeah, this is all over here. Here's a white speck of these gorgeous looking snakes. We got a little Mitchell left. Okay. Now, are all your snakes just the most well behaved snakes ever? I mean. No, I got a couple of nutty cobras in here. Some of the puff adders are kind of nasty boy. Um, something's happening in this cage yeah. over here. Got the Morellas. 
all this over there. On the hanky panky. Good sign. They're making the beast with two backs. Yeah. Some of the things I do with some of these cages, these are all vision cages. But when you got snakes that have really, really small babies, sometimes the babies yep. go right through they the glass. Go right through there. So I put just a little wooden peg in there. And that prevents that from happening. Gotcha. Well, you know, with the activity going on in there, you got a little while. Yeah, to before. it'll be a while. And here's a little rock rattlesnake. Got the twelve rattles. These guys. Very exceptional. So really, get them out in that natural sunlight, and it's just these bright bands and the fluorescent, like green stripe going on in the back. Now, there's really two color phases of this, or two pattern phases. Of this. There's the model. Right. And there is the ones that have, you know, the chevrons or the kind of the horizontal stripes across the back. This one seems like it's, you know, it doesn't like gravity very much. No, it doesn't. So uh, let's talk about our big friend down here. All right, this guy um, I've had for a very long time. I don't even remember how long now, maybe eight years, ten years. Close to ten. Close to ten years. He's a good size. He's probably a good nine foot. Feeds great. Just has a pretty good attitude. Yeah. Um, actually, I like him a lot. Yeah. These guys were a lot of fun to see down in Peru and Ecuador. I've never seen one. Either. Yeah. Well, in Ecuador, we were finding the Chacoan Bushmaster, and of course, uh -huh. we were finding this one in, in Peru. Cool. Well, Here's some of our albino westerns here. Pretty common nowadays. Yeah, but I remember seeing the first, you know, photos of an albino western diamondback and just completely geeking out over them. And They're awesome. These, yeah. were, these were actually born here. Got some Mojaves up here. You gotta love the Scutellatus. These are, um, this one's really nice looking. Let me pull this guy out. Yeah, nice big rattle on that one. That's a good oh, that is just gorgeous. I caught a Mojave out there that was almost four feet. Really? Yeah. But that's a big Mojave. When I showed it to Barney, my buddy out there, he was, he said, that's a horse killer. We call those horse killers. Barney Olton? Yeah. Yeah. Minnesota boy, I love him. No, oh, Barney Tomlin. What's that? Oh, not Barney Olton. Yeah, Barney oh, Tomlin from, um, he's not from Minnesota, so he doesn't. Yeah, he's uh, <laughs> running zoological supplier, Western blood. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Oh, that is just a gorgeous snake. Yeah, we got tiger out. Oh, see, the tigers. Like We're going to be going to Arizona relatively soon, I hope. We're planning that now. Yeah. This is number one on my list to find down in Arizona. Well, if you're down in that area, I'm there. I didn't go, I didn't stay long this summer, but the summer before that, I was there almost all summer. Oh, were you really? Yeah, it was great. So here's one of our tigers. Got a pair in there, so I'm hoping something will happen. Look at that, just nice and calm, well behaved, but you can definitely see why these are called tiger rattlesnakes. Yeah. Look at that pattern right there. So, this is one of my all time favorite rattlesnakes, the black tailed rattlesnakes. Look at that. I just love their head markings. He too loves my microphone cover. The white tails are usually generally pretty calm. Uh, at this moment, I don't like the back of the up But there's why he's called the black tailed rattlesnake. And I just love their head marking. Man, there is a reason why those are my favorite. There. You know, I don't know. There's just something beautiful about a just a you know plain old black tail rattlesnake. There's just something awesome about it. Oh, here, speckled cobra. Speckled cobra. And I got bit a few years back by a speckled cobra. You got bit by a speckle. Yes. And tell us how that all felt. Oh man. <laughs> well, it was 5 a.m. when I got bit. I was used to, I just used the small hook instead of the longer one. Oh. That was the problem. Where'd you get bit? On your arm? Yes, on the finger. This one here. Wow. 
See, I mean, looking at your hand, I can't even really tell that. Yeah. Yeah, you got lucky. Yes, that was lucky. Yeah, that was a little scary. Yeah. The hospital's 15 minutes from here, and the rescue squad picked her up here, right? Is that right? Yes, yes. Yeah, and took her over to the hospital about 15 minutes from here. And she was fine, no reactions at all. And then just about an hour later, she started. Yes. You felt that acid going through your veins. Yes, yeah. after one her hour and 15 minutes. Well, oh boy. Her whole face got distorted, which was weird. I've never seen that before. Her, her whole face was kind of pushing, pulling to the side. And the nurse says to me, does she have a broken nose? I go, no. She goes, well, come here and look at this. I'm going, whoa. And, uh, Yikes. And then she started vomiting and just, and they're like ready to intubate her. But we made a call to the Miami Venom Bank uh, first thing before we went yeah, to the yeah. hospital. And right when she was starting to get very seriously ill, uh, I could hear the helicopter coming in from Miami. And I just whispered in her ear and said, honey, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. And sure enough, she was all right. Wow. Well, that was scary. Glad you're all right. Yeah. Thank you. Too. That could have been could be so worse. much worse. Yes. Well, we got some big Easterns over here. Uh, these are both caught in this area. We have four Easterns in here now. This bigger one here, he bit me a few years back also. Did you bite him back? No, I didn't. No, no. But it hurt. Um, he was kind of coiled up on this corner over here. And normally I just slide the door open a little bit and throw a rat in. Yeah. Well, my hand went in a little too far and he struck all the way from there and hit my hand instead of the rat over oh, here. Man. And it was right here, boom, where he got me. Um, immediately I, I knew I was in trouble. I was like, oh man. So the same lady that was Annette's nurse in the hospital, they became friends. Yeah. And that same nurse was here the day I got bit by this guy. Oh, really? <laughs> I said, hey, guess what? You got to drive in the hospital. So. Bad bite. I got by the time I got to the hospital, which is less, you know, maybe 15 minutes at the most. My entire throat swelled up, swelled shut, and I was going to the anaphylactic shock. And when I was walking in the, the emergency room door, I could feel myself getting, you know, I'm losing yeah, iron. Yeah. I can't breathe, you know. So they put a cut my throat like immediately and put a trach in, and I ended up in a coma for three days, and then another 13 days in the ICU. Um, wow. But nothing. There's nothing that you can really see from where I got bit. And so the doctor said that's because you had quick antivenom and your wife must be feeding you the right food. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about that one. I was like, oh, so how many sense. times have you been bit? I've had five bites. Five. Since 1972. Um, you know, I'm trying not to get any more. Yeah, right. Um, Usually it's just because I get kind of nonchalant about things and you're doing this all the time, every day, every day. and Right, and that's when it becomes routine and then, then we've got the problems. Yes, and then you're not being cautious. Right, right. But right. After, after this bite, that was, I was just like, okay, I gotta be really careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. All right, so we're gonna end this video on the best. Look at those two bad boys. Yeah, these are two kaboons. Um, they are a breeding pair. Yeah, just one of my favorites. It's hard to say which one's my favorite, but right. these guys are definitely up there. I think that the it's a toss-up always, you know, when it comes to Bittus. The, these are in the genus Bittus. Mm -hmm. Is it the Rhino Viper that everybody loves, or is it the Gaboon Viper that everybody loves? Hard to say. Right. I like the Gaboons. Rhinos are a little trickier to keep alive, I think. I don't know why that is, or why it is for me. Yeah, yeah. But I always have more luck with gaboons, but then I got some friends that got rhinos that they are- That thrive. They yeah. Thrive and do very well. Yeah. Me. Now, how hook friendly are these guys? Not very hook friendly. Not very hook friendly. Yeah. They'll be hissing like crazy. So guys, even if you're not into venomous, you have to admit that this is one of the most incredible venomous collections out there. And one of the things that I noticed about this place is how clean it is. 
There is no smell in this room. Every one of these enclosures is spotless. The whole building is spotless, and that is a testament to Mark and Anna's care for these snakes. So anyway, guys, there's more reptile adventures coming up, so hit that subscribe button when you do hit that bell so you never miss an upload. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. And until next time, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.